watching this video tutorial from our course The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website mograflus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we cover atmosphere volume. This shader or atmospheric effect allows you to simulate light scattered by atmosphere. You can use this effect with spotlight and all the area lights. Let me run the IPR and quickly walk you through the scene. We have for this lesson um, this house model with some dead spooky trees surrounding it. For the lighting we have an Arnold physical sky with the bright uh, blue color as the sky tint. And this is what gives us this beautiful sky. And intensity of the physical sky is about 0.3. You can check out the rest of the settings on your own. We also have three spotlights with similar settings. This one in the front, this one on the side, and another one on the back. To add an atmosphere volume to your scene, go to the render settings, Arnold render, and under the main tab, come down to the environment rollout. Right beside the atmosphere field, you have this button which lets you to create and add an atmosphere volume shader. So click on this button and choose atmosphere volume. First of all, in the IPR, you notice we have some atmosphere volume effect going on. Also in the material manager, a new atmosphere volume shader has been created. And this is the shader that has been assigned to the atmosphere field of the environment rollout. Also, you can create your own atmosphere volume shader right from the material manager and then assign it to the atmosphere field of the environment rollout. So from the create menu, Arnold volume, atmosphere and atmosphere volume. And now you can simply drag it to the atmosphere field. In this case, let's just use the one that we created earlier. So you can do it both ways. Now let's open up the atmosphere volume shader and go through its parameters. In order for atmosphere volume to work, you need to have a density higher than zero. Let's go to something like 0.35 here maybe. And density controls the atmospheric volume density. You can see the atmospheric volume effect in the IPR as I'm increasing and decreasing the density volume. Uh, we have this color, we can control the color of the atmosphere volume effect using this. Uh, let's try a few colors here and you can see the results in the IPR. Let's change the color to its default white color. To make it more interesting, you can assign a texture to the color attribute. So let's open the network editor search for the noise node and drag it here. Connect the noise to the color input of the atmosphere volume shader. Increase the scale in all dimensions to three, octaves to two and amplitude to 10 and distortion made something like one. And now we get this complex atmosphere volume shader. We still can work on it, but as you can see, the noise is clearly affecting the behavior of our atmosphere volume. Now let's double click twice on that circle beside our color input in our network editor and disconnect the noise node from our color input, or you can simply click on the connection and that will also disconnect it. And we are back where we were. Let's close the network editor for now. Uh, next, we have attenuation parameters. As I increase the attenuation parameter, the light will only travel through the volume for a short distance. And as I decrease it, the light travels for a longer distance. Let's set the attenuation to around 0.15. And uh, the attenuation value is multiplied by the attenuation color. So if I set it to blue, we are attenuating the blue color. If I set it to red, you are attenuating the red color. Let's put it back to white and set the attenuation amount back to zero. Then we have an isotropy. As I increase it, more rays will be scattered in the direction that the light is facing. And as I go to the negative values, more rays will be scattered in the opposite direction. 
and if it is zero, the light will be scattered evenly in all directions. Let's set the anisotropy back to zero. Then we have samples, which obviously controls the quality of the atmosphere volume effects. Let me just show you two renders with um, two sample values. For the first one, the sample value is set to one. Very noisy. And in the second render, samples are five. And obviously we get a much cleaner render. The other visible noise uh, is from our light sources and also the diffuse samples. So let's select all the lights and increase their samples to about four. Also in the render settings, let's increase our camera samples to four and diffuse samples to five. And this is the uh, render we are gonna have with the settings, which is much cleaner. Let's get back to our atmosphere volume shader and uh, we have another tab. We have camera, diffuse and specular contribution of the shader. If you reduce the camera contribution to zero, you're basically disabling atmospheric volume shader. If I increase diffuse contribution, the atmospheric volume will affect uh, indirect GI diffuse rays. And as I increase and decrease this volume, you can see the effect in the IPR Also, when you increase it, you might get uh, more fireflies and more noise, and uh, you need to increase your diffuse samples even more if you are um, increasing the diffuse contribution to be one. Now, using the specular, you can control how much of the atmospheric volume effect will be seen in specular reflections. And it's very simple, just uh, if the volumetric effect will be seen in specular reflection of surfaces or not. So that is about atmosphere volume shader. And in the next lesson, we talk about another atmospheric effect, which is fog. See you there. In this lesson, we discuss fog, which makes the more distant objects to have less contrast. We are using the exact same scene from our previous lesson. Let's run the IPR. The first thing would be to create a fog shader. Like the atmosphere volume shader, go to your render settings and under the main tab, come down to the environment rollout and using this button, add a fog shader to the atmosphere field. Or you can create the fog shader in the material manager and add it to the atmosphere field. As you can see now, we have some fog in our scene. Let me just open up the fog shader. Uh, first of all, we got the color of the fog. You can try different colors and see the result. Now you're probably going to use a grayscale while you're here. Um, maybe let's just get back to default white color. Uh, then we have distance that controls the density of the fog. So as I increase this value, we're going to have a denser fog. Let's just reset it to the default value again. Height controls the rate of the exponential decay along the direction. Increasing this value makes the gradual decay between the areas with and without fog to be less apparent. So let's try five. Now you can see the decay is sudden. Let's try 10, 13 and 50. Let's just leave it at 50 for now. Then uh, we have the ground normal, which defines the direction of the fog. Right now, the fog is on the Y direction. I can get out of the camera to actually be able to see the effect a bit better. Let's change the ground normal to X axis. You can set it to negative X. Obviously, now the fog has a new direction. I can change it to the Z axis if I wanted to. And based on our camera direction, I'm going to use both the X and Z directions. And finally, we have the ground point, which controls starting point for the fog along the axis set by the direction. Now the direction is set to X and Z. And as I change the ground point, I'm moving the starting point of the fog. And finally, let's set the 
color to the dark gray color, maybe about 20%. Increase the distance to 30 centimeters and uh, height to 500. And set the ground point for both X and Z to negative 1600. And if I get back to the camera, you can see the results in the IPR. So in this lesson, we discussed fog and we are done with lighting section. And from the next lesson, we start the shading section of the course. So I'll see you there. Thank you for watching this video tutorial from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website, mograflus.com and check the entire course out.